I know my background is messy. Deal with it. You're into Homestuck and Hive Swap. A messy background should be normal. John, answer troll. I'm supposed to antagonize a few members of your trivial species. I have to start somewhere and someone, so I am starting with you, and now. It's going to be pointless and unpleasant, mostly for me. Actually, you know what? I'm not really feeling this at all. Goodbye. She's not here right now. She's asleep. But, okay, see ya. Is this your human sarcasm that I've heard about, that you always use and that is basically a terrible way to communicate? Um, no? I thought that was the thing you did. The Rose Human, specifically. Oh yeah, that's me, I am the Rose Human. Look at me, I am so smart with all these snooty words and complicated things to say. I am the Queen of Books! Okay, these are definitely insincere statements. Why do you work so hard at being so awful? Oh, I'm so burned. These burns are crazy. Can we just cut to the chase and be friends already? These cat and mouse games are so dumb. You know we're just all going to be friends at some point anyway. Have we spoken before? I don't know, uh, maybe? It's so hard to keep track with all your time nonsense. Now that I think about it, it is pretty conceivable that I will talk to you again in the past after this conversation. That's because you guys always do things the hard way. And the dumb way. I should figure out how the viewport feature of this application works, so I can see what such a primitive creature looks like. Haha, <laughs> well, I know what you guys look like. You kind of look like Howie Mandel from Little Monsters. Even though, to be perfectly frank, he was kind of a big monster. Because he was a big goofy adult, and Fred Savage was like his child prankster sidekick. Is this an adversary you have encountered on your quest? No, it's a movie. You should ask John about it, because he thinks it's awesome, which it is. It seems you put stock in John's assessment of things, even really uninteresting things that are pretty terrible to listen to. He is either the leader of your party, or you hold whatever the human equivalent of mating fondness for him is. Yeah, I got him this really cool bunny for his birthday, and it's really nicely knitted and everything, because I'm basically in love with him, you're right. <laughs> uh, okay. Heh, <laughs> just kidding, I'm sure John knows it because I'm really thoughtful, and I bet he'd really appreciate the present, and would say thank you if he were here. Okay, human courtship is definitely a strange thing, and it's sort of blowing my mind listening to this. I think I'll talk to someone else now. Why don't you talk to John? Maybe. When along his timeline would you recommend communicating with him? Oh man, I don't know. Why don't you pick the time that'll make the most complicated mess out of everything imaginable? You know that's what you're gonna do anyway. Considering that you're obviously not that smart, and basically understand whipping bug wings fuck all about even the most elementary temporal mechanics, I'm a bit perplexed as to why I find myself so vehemently fondling the short end of the antagonism stick here. Kind of irritating. I'm going to talk to your comrades, this John Human, and figure out what's going on. Okay, if you talk to him in the past, you'll understand even less buggy webs fuck all about time. And he'll be confused, so maybe pay something from this conversation to him, I don't know. And if you talk to him in the future, he'll know all this stuff, like things you've said to him but haven't said yet. And then you'll be confused, sorry. That's just how this works, don't say I didn't warn you. Consider me fully briefed on the matter. Until next time, Rose. Next time, in the past. Yeah, bye! <laughs> If you're not too busy still setting up the network, perhaps you could come show me how to activate the viewport. I am in fact too busy still setting it up. Whoa, here's an idea. Press F1. My keyboard is missing the F1 key. Lies. Don't bother me, I'm not in the mood. If I see one more snarl of wires, kind of jutting out and being tangled or whatever, I gotta perform some sort of athletic fucking somersault off the deep end and get a call from the president or some shit. So go away. You used to like to talk more. If I recall, I was typically the one who would solicit reprieves from your nonsense. So I don't know what happened. That was before I knew we were all going to die. 
and no one believed me. And now look at you all, all believing me suddenly. Hmm, uncanny. Then why are you doing this? Setting up these stations for us? To get you all off my bulge about it. But I won't troll any of them personally. No way. Kinda juvenile. But you guys go knock yourselves out, okay? See the menu up top? Fiddle around with that until you open the viewport. I did fiddle with it, to no avail. If you can't figure shit out by fucking around, you don't belong near computers. Kinda like with registered sex offenders in schools. If you move to a new town, you have to go up to your neighbor's door and warn them about how stupid you are, and give them a chance to hide all their innocent technology. <laughs> and vandalize your house. <gasps> I was gonna say, he makes references like Dave, and then he'd want the fuck. Rose and Dave, shut up and jam. Dave shows you some of his sweet gear. Wow, he is so cool. I am about to have a seizure. <laughs> Rose. First, be the pony. Second, follow mom. You are now the pony. You stand outside of some ruins which your beloved master's mother entered recently. Outside you find a striking scarcity of oats or greenery or anything at all that is delicious to chew on. This is as a compelling reason as any to follow her inside. Maplehoof, enter. You go in the ruins. Your clopping hooves echo throughout the cavernous and foreboding environment. But you are too stupid to be nervous. Your powerful snout detects the scent of Rose's mom. She went this way. Maplehoof, follow scent. How many Look fucking grist is there? there? Look at all this grist. A large and terrible monster must have surely been slain here. Maplehoof, collect grist. You pick up all the grist and store it in Rose's grist cache. This is entirely too much grist of too many exotic types for such a low level player. But you'll take it. You don't look a gift horse in the pink heart tattoo. The grist overflow is gathered by the grist gutter utility supplied by Grist Torrent. It is stored and gradually redirected to other players. What? Let's proceed. So that's how they will leave his mom stands on a small platform and disappears. You are a little nervous about transportalizing yourself. As a quadruped, grizzly bisection strikes you as a very real possibility. Even though you're too dumb to think of such things. <laughs> John, first, be the hat. Second, find Dad. Rose stops being the pony just in time for John to start being the hat. The breeze carries you to where you need to go. You settle down in front of a man in sore need of a fresh hat. He gathers the clean hat, along with a shoe he found through similarly serendipitous means to replace the one he lost. Oh, so the grandfather's actually alive in this time.
John, check out Rose's Alchemeter. You decide to try out the code Dave Sprite gave you. John, make item. This thing is huge and costs a fortune. Half a million pieces of bilgrist, garnets, diamonds and gold, and a single piece of quartz. There's no way you can make that, let alone wield it even with your ghost gloves. Is that an axe? Now John, shrink it down. You use the Alchemeter's scaling upgrade to reduce it to a more manageable and affordable size. You make a weapon called Fear No Anvil. This reminds me of a um, hammer that you make in World of Warcraft vanilla. That's a legendary item. <laughs> Meanwhile, he just made it on like World 1. Yeah, sure. Let's just give him one of these. Let's see how it goes. You know what it's missing? It's missing one of those pogo things so he can do this with it. He actually has to swing this manually. That doesn't work. You gotta put the thing on the back to make it go like this. Makes it easier. John, pester Dave Sprite. So, what's this? The thing the code made. Really powerful hammer. How do you know? I thought you couldn't use hammers. I can't. Better be, though. Got it from Hephaestus. Who's that? Really, really tough, tough to kill dude. You killed him for it? Nope. How'd you get it, then? Shenanigans. Okay. Rose, check out Dave's computer. It seems you have a visitor. T.A. Fix G.A.'s computer. There's nothing to fix. Just got to open up the viewport. It's easy. Rose, examine laptop. Someone has been using your pester chum account. And you somehow doubt the culprit was this young, upright amphibian presently throwing a fit. Rose, go find John. You hurry to the door so that you can catch John before he goes gallivanting off somewhere. But it seems your door is ajar. Funny, you don't remember leaving your door ajar, even though it's sort of absurd for you to take note of such a thing, considering John recently left your room. Oh well, it doesn't matter. You will now proceed through this door uneventfully. You get dumped on by a bucket full of hellacious blue phlegm aneurysm gushers as a thoughtful but mischievous thank you gesture from John. Your prankster's gambit plunges to an all-time low. You cannot hope to defeat Egbert in a prank off. He's simply the best there is. She's gonna remember this. John, equip trusty rocket. Rose obviously isn't waking up anytime soon. Might as well take some time to explore, and maybe stop by again later. Why, Dr. Meowgan? Do you want to come along for the ride? It sure looks that way. Okay, hop aboard then. Adventure awaits! Where is he off to now? At least you have this little fellow here to keep you company. You will name him Viceroy Bubbles Von Salamancer. Dave, be the puppet. You have no idea what the hell that means. But yeah, you can kiss that obnoxious puppet goodbye. Maybe now you can get a decent night's sleep. Is that how little Cal ends up in... Oh, um, friend sim? Is that Dave's brother's thing? Okay, this is the most ridiculous thing you have ever seen. What is taking place here is almost certainly illegal. You're not sure which laws are being broken, but it's probably a lot. <laughs> Authority regulator, follow. <laughs> John, explore. 
Keeping track of all this shit is You spy insane. a boat on the shore of one of the islands below. You wonder who could be out here rowing in the middle of the ocean. But isn't that Rose's mom? John, thing? investigate. Footprints in the sand. The mystery deepens. John, enter. There are many frightening and powerful monsters in here. John, a grass. You stun them with the cool time powers of your awesome new hammer, and then dispatch them swiftly. Now, it is suggested that you collect the spoils. The good Dr. Spengler helps you gather the riches. John, proceed. There's a platform over here. Who guess it'll just go stand on it? Oh wow, it just made you disappear! So he's got the end game hammer now. And he's got end game Dave and Gigi advising him. So I guess at this point there's no reason why any of these difficult minions should be a problem, but I'm guessing he still can't kill the sleeping end game boss in the final world yet. Otherwise Dave would have told him to go and finish him off, so... I don't know. I don't think they're going to have a problem progressing through this world because they're able to kill the monsters so quickly and get so much build grist, like, insane amounts. So, they're practically playing the game on easy mode right now. I think the only thing that's going to stop them is the trolling from the trolls. Who I don't think I'm going to want to troll them for very much longer because the trolling timeline has already taken place. And I'm guessing this is the timeline where they actually want to fix this shit out. So it should be okay. Act 4, Part 9. All we can do is continue watching. The one thing that is like driving me nuts is I'm watching this on the, on the separate monitor here. But occasionally my eyes start hurting because it's so pixelated, so I might time to time start watching it here. Which is on the monitor that is controlling the stream. Because I can see a preview of the stream. So, I might do that on time to time just because my eyes are killing me. Pixelation's a bitch. I could see, I could actually see the boxes of the drawings. Because it was made in like MS Paint or something. Alright, here we go, part 9. God, the pixelation. So bad. John, explore lab. It was made in paint. Now, <laughs> I can what tell. the hell is going on in here? John, explore the lab further. Ah, uh, the fuck? Now, what in the hell is going on in here? Oh, John, who cares? Just ride the pony already. Yes! Fuck yes! Hell fucking yes! But seriously, what in the hell is going on in here? Well, that looks John, like a seriously, knife. seriously, just keep exploring. It's chess pieces. You find a sweet get-up. It's almost as if it was tailor-made for you. How weird would that be? John, put it on. You equip the Junior Ectobiologist's lab suit. It looks like the body now from Now examine the nearby station. Now what in the hell is going on in here? Of course it's obvious what's going on in here. It's another one of those four-monitored house-shaped terminal thingies. Authority Regulator. Resist urge gotcha. to ride bro's rocket board. You fail to resist the urge. You start thrashing up stunts, something uncanny brutal on your quest for mad justice, yo. And get this way root municipality under control. Shit is basically flying off the hook. It's like shit wants nothing to do with that hook. The hook filed for divorce from that shit and is now seeking custody of the hook and that shit's two kids. I'm sorry, but this- the, okay, there's a story and occasionally they have this shit like this that they just put in there that is really confusing and quite frankly, the less you think about it, the better off you are. Authority regulator! Pop a fucking wheelie! These hops are unreal! Shit, this flagrant should be illegal! It probably is! But you don't care! Don't think about it too much. Just nod. Yes. Yes. Good. Don't think about it. Stop thinking about it. Parcel mistress, prepare to depart for battlefield. 
You have travelled to Prospect's moon to board a shuttle headed for the battlefield. This you pay attention there, to. There, you will seek the counsel of the White King. <laughs> Is it one of the guys from the, um, um... The Midnight Crew? You have unwittingly been tailed by a nefarious courtyard droll from Durse. Courtyard droll. Pick Parcel Mistress's pocket. You pilfer the White Queen's ring. Parcel Mistress, depart. None the wiser, you board the shuttle. Next stop, Skyer. Damn it. You receive an incoming message from the Draconian Dignitary. I got the ring! Good. Bring it to me while I wait for an update from the Hegemonic Brute. He's been tracing the King's movements on the battlefield. Are you still wearing that ridiculous outfit? You don't have to anymore, by orders of the Sovereign Slayer. I'd still rather wear the outfit. He's got nothing to say about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. What? Clubber. What? Additional pummeling. Dead Grandpa Smackdown. Sweet catch. Wait, so she got the ring from who? Oh. Oh, it's too late. She's gone. You have to remember to deliver it later somehow. The best way to remind yourself that you're carrying a ring is to put it on your finger. But doesn't that make you the White Queen? Okay. Okay. Of course that was just an imaginary transformation, since the ring doesn't work like that on humans. It was fun to pretend, though. Uh... Meanwhile, in a timeless expanse, uh... somewhere... A war-weary villain rues eternal struggle between feuding royalty. The battlefield holds little promise for the peaceful life of a simple farmer. <laughs> but the, the the fucking surrealness of this is that in chess, you can't check a king with a king. Because the enemy can... You're auto-checking yourself. So technically, you can't. And I know they did it in Code Geass, but that was wrong. They ignored the rules of chess in an anime that was showing off how well it understands chess. Which it clearly doesn't. Fuck off. Fuck off. Alright, fuck off. Following the rules, it's a stalemate. Well, I thought that black was always gonna win, so what happened? Ah! So they have flying ships, but they're still using swords. Gotcha. rings are there? One for every character in the game?
What is this guy doing? Basically collecting rings? The fuck? Rose, alchemize a whole bunch of cool stuff. Shut up! It's their turn! Wait, wait, wait. What was the fucking... Each one of those starves contains a world in which they're fighting? So, a world within a world? Ugh. So confusing, because they show the Black King standing on the ground with a giant scepter, but then they also have the Black King that took the ring from the other one, flying in the air. It's just... My god. It, it gets very confusing very quickly. Because your eyes don't know if it's the same or they're different. Fine hub and laptop. You make the hub top. Okay. That one was pretty obvious. Combine bronzed vacuum and umbrella. You make the bronzed vacuum umbrella. Yeah, Useless. Jack Noir. But I you're know still getting warmed was. up. Combine salamander and eldritch plush. You make a huggable soft salamander plush. You award it to Viceroy on account of good behavior. Combine ink bottles and gushers. So Jack Noir, wait, wait. You make so Jack Noir isn't the king. The guy standing was the Black King. Jack stole the ring after he killed the Black King. Okay, so, but that was in the same time, right? So Jack Noir was flying and he had a ring. At the same time, the Black King is standing on the ground and he also has a ring. So... Technically, there are two rings. Yeah, he stole the ring from the Black Queen, but the... Okay, cool. So, King was there, but... Okay, got... Alright, that makes sense. Right, and the White Queen gave the White Ring to the Postmistress, who now doesn't have it, and she went to the White King, who gave her his scepter. And he stopped being the White King. Okay, okay, now it's making more sense. I forgot that there were queens. Okay, 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 okay. Oof, 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 oof. That was a little bit of digestion. Okay, we're not totally lost. A box of bodacious black liquid sorrow gushes. Another croc of nightmare rears its ugly head. The ink reverses the healing properties of the blue phlegm. These are pure poison. Combine hub top and hair band. You make the hub top band. A oh, convenient hands-free computing device. A scouter. Combine magnetic W and bottle of vodka. You make a bottle of magnetic vodka. In addition to having high alcohol content, the liquid inside appears to have magnetic properties. You... You guess this could be useful. Combine wizard statue like mother, with like ball daughter. of yarn. You make a ball of silken wizard beard yarn with magical properties. It has magical properties because it is made of a wizard. Maybe you can make something with magical properties that is more useful than this. She's just wasting Grist at this point. Combine wizard statue and knitting needles. You make a pair of needle wands. They crackle with the magic energies. Okay. It is time to make something cool to wear. That makes sense. Now, combine knittings and velvet pillow and squiddle shirt. You make a stylish velvet squiddle knit dress. Combine needle wands and grimoire. You make the thorns of Oglagoth. These needles seem to shiver with the dark desires of the Deep One. Any sane adventurer would cast these instruments of the occult into the furthest ring and forget they ever existed. I'd just like to point out that, apart from being really cool and being an endgame item, uh, there was such a weapon in uh, World of Warcraft Legion, and it was effectively a dagger that was held by priests, and it had the remnants of the soul of an old god, which is from pretty much the same... Um, what's it called? Um, what, what, what's that guy that wrote this book about... Come on, you know what it is. I've lost it. I've lost it. Uh, uh, HP Lovecraft. It was HP, like, it, th these monsters, these old gods come from the same universe as the HP Lovecraft stuff. And it's 
pretty much got the remnants of the soul of an old god in this weapon that's actually being used by a player. And you recover it from one of these ancient tombs and everything. But an interesting little thing, and you play this expansion for a year, is that the weapon actually whispers to you. So if you're playing and you've got the volume on, this thing is actually talking to you. And as you use it and it becomes more powerful, the whisper becomes more audible. And it's basically, whenever you're using it, telling it that your friends don't trust you. Your friends will betray you. You should slay them all. And it's literally just whispering this shit in your ear. It's almost like it's brainwashing you. That's what, that's the vibe that these things give me. It's like, yeah, you could use them. They're a really awesome weapon. Except they talk to you in your sleep, telling you to kill your friends. I wonder how long you're going to last before it brainwashes you. Hmm. Be worried. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Now Rose, a grieve encroaching malefactors. Welcome to the party, motherfuckers! Jade, build. You take advantage of Dave's nap to make some architectural headway on his building. You are really proud of your floor plan. It is... So cool! Speaking of naps, you have been asleep for some time yourself. You suppose you'd better wake up soon. But then, your neighbour in the other tower is supposed to be waking up soon too. And it sure would be a shame if you weren't around to greet him. Well, that was an odd way to end it. They just cut it like, cut. Like, and cut. Sort of like, oh, okay. It, you kind of cut it mid-scene there, but okay. Cool. Alright, Hive, Hive Stuck... What? Homestuck, Act 4, Part 10. Alright, this one's 21 minutes, so it's probably a section. It's kind of weird. It's kind of always odd where they choose to cut these things. Mid-scene. Okay, back to Dave, it looks like. Dave, wake up and jam. And by jam, you mean alchemize, of course. Whoa, your house is huge suddenly. Anyway, let's just get this party started. Dave, combine sunglasses and iPhone. I don't know about you, but I would never combine anything with iPhone because it would make it break so easily. Like a sword combined with an iPhone would break after single use. Or glasses with iPhone would, you know, break just wearing them normally. Like you wouldn't want to do that. Now, what you would want to do is mix it with a Nokia. That shit's indestructible. Like Nokia body armor. You know what? Why hasn't Nokia gone into the body armor business? I mean, anyone that's fucking used the Nokia growing up is probably in the military. They would feel very safe knowing that they're wearing Nokia. Like, the fucking enemy would be like, No, they're wearing Nokia. Like, the fucking tank should have a Nokia logo on it. No one would even bother attacking that thing. They'd be like, that thing's indestructible. You make a pair of eye shades. This one was really obvious, because Future Dave had a pair, but he took them with him when he prototyped himself. But now you have a pair too, so that's cool. Dave, combine timetables and computer. You make the turn top. Convenient computing on the go, sort of like you have with your eye shades. But with all your important files and apps on there, not to mention Spurb. I'm sorry, but why does the laptop have liquid cooling? Plus, maybe it has some weird time powers? You have no idea. You have to mess with it later. I'm sorry, but if I was going to have mobile computing, I would want Iba. I wouldn't mind having a little Iba on my shoulder like a pirate would have a parrot. And Iba could just talk to me. Iba, what is their power level? Oh god, I miss Iba so much. Iba was so good. Oh. <laughs> miss that bitch. She was a troll, but a lovable troll. With Smuppet. You upgrade the puppet tux future Dave made. He probably made it by combining one of your bro's badass marinette suits with your shirt and scaling it up to fit. That's how you would have done it anyway. You add a Smuppet to the mix to make a softer, more stylish red plush puppet tux. 
It's like walking around in snuggly pajamas. Action pajamas. Dave, combine broken Khaled scratch and Ruby contraband. You combine a couple more items you got from future Dave's loot stash. The broken form of Khaled scratch and some Ruby contraband. Whatever the hell that is. The resulting item costs a fortune. You have no idea what it is. Dave, preview item with Holopad. You momentarily reconfigure your alchemeter upgrades to make use of the Holopad extension. You pop the card in the slot and check it out. The combination will produce the Broken Scarlet Ribitar. Now combine Whole Khaled Scratch and Ruby Contraband. Out of curiosity, you try it again with the whole sword. You dial back Khaled Scratch's little turntable, rewinding the sword to a point in its history before it was broken. You then combine it with the red frog thingy and show the complete Scarlet Ribitar. But there's no way you could afford to make that yet. It costs even more now. Maybe you'll stick to combining items around your house for now. I'm sorry, but you, you're looking at artifact quality weapons here. This isn't even legendary at this point. This looks like artifact. It's literally red. I'm sorry, but they could kill the endgame boss at this point while it's sleeping. Rather than stuff from your future Silidex, it'll be less confusing that way. And probably less expensive. Dave, combine shitty sword and hella Jeff drawing. Why? You use one of your bro's really shitty swords from the fridge and a prince out of hella Jeff to make a... sword. This thing is so unspeakably shitty, you are having a hard time even holding it. <coughs> now, combine Snoop Dogg photo and mini air conditioner and Khaled scratch. <laughs> you make the Snoop Dogg snow cone machete. When foes drop it like it's hot, just turn up the Blizz Nizzle Nozzle so they chiz lax for Rizzle. So you don't have enough stuff to make the ultimate weapon, and your solution is to use all your shit to make shit that you won't even use. Dave, combine skateboard and hella Jeff drawing. Oh god. You make Unreal Air. Stop! And there it goes. <laughs> oh fucking hell. It's ridiculous what kind of air this thing is getting. Dude, come get a ruler, check this out. Yeah, it's not coming back. Dave, make another one. You just make another one and quickly stash it in a card so it can't escape from above. Dave, combine uh. Game Bro magazine and timetables. You turn back the clock and make a vintage Game Bro. You think you remember this one from your bro stash? It's a classic. What? Now combine what? Batarang and Midnight Crew poster. You make a whole pile of Suitorangs because they are really cool and pretty cheap. Dave, combine Plush Puppet Tux and Midnight Crew poster. You make four aces suited. You aren't really sure which one you like better. The red one is softer, or the black one is sort of stiff and starchy. Anyone wearing this suit is all business. Maybe you'll switch it up as your mood dictates. Now, combine plush puppet tux and felt poster. This would make some felt duds, if you had whatever that green grist is. Dave, combine smuppet and felt poster. You make a jutting out an impudent felt plush. You do an acrobatic fucking pirouette off the handle and into his heart. And he into yours. Now, combine dead things in amber, conditional and style with Smuppet. You make a phone mutant Smuppet encased in amber. Now we're getting somewhere. Now, Dave, combine dead things in amber, conditional or style with Smuppet. For the sake of science, you conditional or combine them instead of conditional and combine. You make an Amber Mutant Smuppet abomination. So cool. Now this is how you make shit work. Egbert and Lalonde should be taking notes. Now Dave, combine Fetus in a jar and Mr. T puppet. You make the foam fetal Mr. T in a jar. 
Another back-breaking victory for science. You're looking pretty chill with your new freak show entourage. Even the fucking guy up there is like, the fuck is going on? The underlings all look kind of put off by it, though. You're kind of weirding them out. Yeah, me too. Dave, combine camera and capture log card. You make the Captureoid camera. You can use it to snap a ghost image of any object without capture logging it. Spits it out on a brand new capture log card every time. That's useful. Could be a useful way to take a large inventory of anything you encounter without cluttering up your Cilladex. Also for grabbing codes for stuff you can't ordinarily pick up. Dave, take photo of self. You take one of your patented, ironic, cool guy self-portraits. Man. So cool. Don't stop mass producing That's yourself. That's really all there is to say on the matter. Dave, combine fetus in a jar with self-portrait photo. That would apparently make Dave's brain in a jar. Gross. It costs a king's ransom though, because of course, the organ is virtually inimitable. Doesn't stop you from captureoiding its hologram though. Dave, captureoid the hologram of your own brain. Okay, that's probably the weirdest thing you've ever done, but okay. Dave, combine brain and sweet bro and hella Jeff drawing and captureoid camera. You make the Sabadger fire. Finally, something useful. It costs you minus 1000 units of artifact grist. Dave, try it out. prints out a sweet bro and hella Jeff comic in some way related to whatever you take a picture of. This should save you a lot of time. Specifically the five minutes it takes you to draw a comic. You're a busy guy. Now Dave, make copies of Rose's journals. Can't forget the most important thing you came up here to make. Gotta be getting your snoop on. Dave, take a look. One book is titled Meow, the other is titled Complacency of the Learned. Gee, you wonder what could be in Meow? Dave, read it. To no surprise at all, this book is full of more Meow letters. Looks like Rose is totally nuts. What else is new? You'll guess you'll try out the other book. Looks like it's just some sort of creative writing project. Now Dave, read Complacency of the Learned. Frigglish bothered his beard as if unkinking a hitch in a long silk windsock. A more pedestrian audience would parse the exhibit as nervous compulsion, behavior to petition contempt among the reasonable. He was, however, not surrounded by the reasonable, but the wise, a distinction in men that would forever be the difference in history's garland of treasured follies. As a matter of fact, his catter of fellow wizards were all putting similar moves on their beards as well. The practice would invince thoughtfulness, sagacity even, if they didn't do it all the time. Standing in line at the bank, shooing squirrels from bird feeders, Few occasions were safe. Zasserpan inspected the clue. A single piece of evidence cradled in his coriaceous old man palms. 
It was a human bone, not striking in the tale it told alone so much, as that told by the thousands like it festooning the marshy soil of the mass grave. The grisly expanse bore the texture of a decadent dessert, like one of Smarney's formidable custard trifles wobbled out on wheels for the holidays, to the dismay of a small nation. "'You're certain of this?' asked Frigglish. Despite what he was doing with his beard, he was, in fact, immersed in meaningful contemplation. "'I am afraid I am becoming more so with each terrible tick groused by that gaudy timepiece slung around your neck. In case it wasn't clear, Frigglish wore a clock Zasserpan didn't care for. It was magic. The massacre of Sir Skenelf was not as written.' What has you convinced in the hand of our disciples in this blackness? Executus chimed in. I believe. I, a fat face stammered, his eyes darting with the guilt of a thief in the throes of an unraveling alibi. I can summon a more pressing line of inquiry. No, Smarney, nobody was in the mood for a sticky bunt loaf just now. Zasserpan's ears fell insubstantial to any line of inquiry, pastry-oriented or otherwise. His abstruse contour carved a pondering shape in the fog, carpeting centuries dead. His eleven contemporaries, too, embraced the muted consternation of their great predicant scholar. Few wizards kept sharper adumptratives or read them with such lucidity. When Zasserpan treated men with silence, it was seldom unrepaid by the wise and reasonable alike. It was harrowing to entertain. Zasserpan, the learned, storied complacency of wizards, was marked for grander descendants. Disciples hand-picked, vetted by Ockite the Bonafide and tested by Gastro the Munificent. The twelve sweetest, most studious children a pair of elderly eyes could give their sparkle, not the ragged gutter snipes so oft harvested by the common obscenity, those vituperative little beggars with hearts too corrupt as dropped bananas brown, that these chosen youngsters would turn was not merely unthinkable, but something of a roundhouse to the temporal bones of the upper indifference's high chamber of soft skulled prophets. His wisdom savaged brow pruned further with recount of his many lessons to would-be successors, lessons to advance humanity's elucidation and prosperity, an outcome this bleak trail now painfully obviated. There were few puzzles the learned could not suspend and dissect in the recondite manifold beneath his extremely expensive pointy hat. Daring to pitch his cherished pupils in with the foul melange of history's robes, the heretofore abstract scourge that built up civilizations with ungodly magic and tore them down with joyful malice would prove an intellectual trespass to make his calcium-deficient bones quake. And more daring yet was the only question that now mattered. Could a bunch of bearded, scraggly old men in preposterous outfits hunt them down? He didn't have an answer. Only a simple observation so blunt and uncharacteristically jejun, for the lauded stage it was breathtaking in its self-evidency. We're going to need more wands. There is a writer, um, very old, he's probably died before my father was even born, and he is famous in Serbian literature for spending multiple pages describing a leaf. He literally spends multiple pages in a book describing what a leaf looks like on a branch on a tree. That, that is the type of insanity that Rose is venturing towards. I can't help but think at the back of my mind that she really, really needs a boyfriend. Or a girlfriend, whatever, just anything. Because... <laughs> <laughs> she spent a solid three paragraphs describing that the wizard was a wizard. I'm dying. Wow. Think of something better. God. This wizard story seems really involved and kind of confusing. 
You have to save your place and dig into it later. And then maybe ask Rose what the hell the deal with it is. I need new Wesker glasses. Dave, go get a bookmark. You return to your room in search of a bookmark. Oh, hey. Finally, a use for that pointless juice-stained beta that will never serve any purpose, past or future. You drop it on the John in case you're looking for some reading material later. Dave, check on Rose. Now Dave, pester. Whoa, why are you burning your wizard fanfiction? I'm not. This book contains a genetic code. Oh, okay. Then why are you burning that? Ivo Man Mandrich? I am not sure. I personally haven't read his book. I just know about him. I don't know what his name is, but he could be. It could be. Could be. The gods from the furthest ring asked me to. That's some dumb wizard thing you just made up, or something to do with tentacle monsters. I can't keep track of what you like anymore. How did you know I wrote a story about wizards anyway? John told me. He was all snooping around your room while you were asleep, and I was like, no man, don't. So not cool. Then he was like, haha, <laughs> dude, check it out. This book is full of wizard slash. And I was like, I don't even want to know. This is such a crazy violation of privacy. Hmm, this story sounds suspicious. Do you want me to chew him out about it? I will, because that was so outrageous. I don't know where he got off being like that. No, I don't actually mind. Too bad I missed him. I thought you hated wizards. What's the deal with that? Oh, I like wizards. What I don't like is my mother's obsession with feigning interest in them to antagonize me. Oh man, that's so messed up that you think that. She probably digs wizards for real, just like you, and you're blowing shit out of proportion like pretty much always. You and she could probably have been chatting up how awesome wizards were this whole time, but no. You're probably burning your nut job meow book to spite her too, aren't you? No, I told you. It's one of the gene sequences locked in my subconscious. The gods say it's critical to destroy it. Oh yeah, I thought that was a joke. When did they say that? When I was asleep. You mean when we were dancing and stuff in our dreams? Yes. When I flew to your tower, I heard them. They're far above, in the dark sky. I've never seen or heard these things in my dreams. Aren't you often distracted by music and puppets? Uh, yeah. Have you ever looked into the sky without your shades? No, what a ridiculous question. Maybe you should try it sometime. You're the prince of the moon. I'm sure they've been meaning to seek a royal audience. I bought what it like in high school ages ago. What do all mean? Dunno. Anyway, yeah, I guess Finally I'll have a that. use for them. Get some sky monsters to boss me around sounds cool. Dave Sprite, also Pester. So, really, why are you burning that? I just explained this to other Dave. Do I have to explain everything to you twice now? No, I know. I'm using Dave's spare computer. I saw the whole conversation through his Pester Trump account. Oh, I see. So instead of having to double explain, I merely have to put up with being double spied upon. What a relief! I just mean, you didn't burn that book in the future. That book was completely pointless. I know, but now it's not. You appeared to make it relevant by traveling to the past. So, does that mean the sleeping thing worked? You remember the future? I remember some things. Okay, cool. So why is the cat code so terrible now? I don't know, but the gods were pretty emphatic about it. Well, okay, I guess it's done, but why are you so sure they're right? Have you ever known them to be wrong? I guess not, but they sort of freak me out. I mean, listening to gross space mutants all day isn't my idea of an awesome time, especially the ones that sing. Oh god. Is that why you always kept the music turned up? No, I flip out the ill jams because they kick ass, obviously. I guess we'll chalk another riddle up in the solved column. Yeah, case the fuck closed. Are you talking to future me? Yes. Okay, I'm out of the loop again. Between you taking orders from Dream Beasts and birdwing me with, like, future secrets, I'm doing some sort of spectacular fucking jackknife up the loop and getting a wink and a nod from Barack Obama. I'm coming upstairs. Okay. Wait, what are you doing now? Dave, chill with Dave Sprite. So... It was pretty funny how I made a copy of Rose's evil book right before she burned it, and now she doesn't know about it. 
I know, it's crazy what kind of foresight this guy has. I'm telling you, coincidences like that are unreal. They don't even happen, most of the time. The best thing about how I did that is how it in no way will ever come back to bite us in the ass, ever. Dude, our shit is safe. So safe? Gonna sleep pretty sound tonight with that big fucking payload of safety you just got dropped on us. Gonna be all hugging my pillow and shit, grinning like a goddamn bear full of honey. Safer than some Flintstone vitamins in a bottle. Keep twisting, Junior. All you get is clicks. Asshole thinks his candy doesn't even know he just stepped on a security rake and got a face full of fucking safety. Yeah. Anyway, guess I'll go back down and bring that book. Yeah, alright. Dave, go back in time and stop the thief! It looks like you already tried that. Whoever took those books was a pretty cold-blooded dude. You'll figure you'll call it on the time travel for a while. Don't want to see Dave corpses just start to pile up. Especially if one of them winds up being you. Wait, so he went back in time to try to stop the thief, ended up dying. And because he died in the past, the corpse is still there. But, so... The way for him to go back in time isn't that he physically transports himself back in time. He creates a copy of himself which goes back in time and the original stays here. So every piece of time travel is actually duplication. That's dangerous. Dave, throw yourself out the window. You ditch the body before Jade sees it. That would probably freak her out. And the guy was still there. Now, John, press a button on the control panel. You push one of the nearby buttons. It activates the upper right monitor. The view is locked on to a particular location on Earth at a particular date and time. Doesn't that just look like one of those sim games where you build towns and stuff? Look how it's done. It's like, oh, I've done these streets in such a way. Yay. Whoever was in the lab appears to have recently calibrated this device. John, examine monitor. The monitor displays a town on the west coast of the United States. It appears to be your old neighborhood. But there is a factory there you do not recognize. The date is December 1st, 1995. A few months before you were born. John, zoom in. An old woman is escorted by her son on a lovely day. A target has been locked over the gentleman's mother. A meteor overhead looms unnoticed. They witness the destruction of the facility. What? Collateral damage to a corporation owned by a renowned billionaire explorer. A mystery begins. Is that the thingy's... Granddad? In an alternate timeline, Dave saw no corpse and then went back in time and then died. Our Dave saw the corpse and didn't go back in time. Right. So the timelines are basically all just jumbling up in this one. So this timeline is basically a clusterfuck of all the other timelines. Great. <laughs> Keep hopping them timelines, guys. Make this timeline a clusterfuck. It's literally a doorway into all the other timelines. Our timeline is a corridor, and every other timeline is a room. We're in literally no timeline. I'm sure this won't cause any problems in the space-time continuum. 